Hello YouTubers, welcome to part 6 of Project Freebie Jet Ski. Today I'm going to start out with talking about how much I spent on the jet ski so far. So right here are all the receipts. And the first thing I needed was a starter, which was $39.99. A Bendix, which was $15. Bucks. And then I needed some miscellaneous bolts and sealants, which was $11.72. And then if you remember when I was putting together the, uh, the individual intake runners, my gasket kit was missing two reed gaskets, so I had to buy two additional, which was $3.78. And then the exhaust gaskets were $22.91. And then the biggest expense so far were the carburetors. If you saw on the prior videos, um, the carburetors, the original ones, they were just in terrible condition. I just didn't want to mess with rebuilding them. I thought they were too far gone. So I went ahead and bought a set of clean used ones, and that set me back 110 bucks. So, so far I spent $203.40 out of my original $350 budget, which leaves me with $146.60 left to spend on the jet ski. So as long as nothing major happens, I should be under my $350 budget, which is pretty cool. So with that being said, let's get started on rebuilding these carburetors. Now I bought these on eBay, and as you can see they're in very clean condition. But I still want to take them apart. I want to verify that everything's clean inside and the needle and seat isn't leaking and that the pop-off pressure is set. So let's go ahead and get started with taking these things apart. Well, it's that time to see what $110 worth of carburetors bought me. I'm going to start digging into these things, making sure that they're clean inside and that they're working properly. But before I do that, I thought I'd talk about some of the tools that I'll be using. One is a uh, pop-off pressure tester. Very important, definitely need one of these. Uh, flathead screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver, need a nose pliers, a hammer, and then this guy. Uh, probably a lot of people aren't familiar with this one. This is called actually an impact screwdriver. And this thing is a lifesaver make, to make sure that I do not strip out these screws that are located on the side of the carburetor. Now if you've ever taken apart a set of carburetors and you tried to loosen these screws by hand, then you know that you've probably come across stripping these guys out. Well, if you have one of these impact screwdrivers, I guarantee you probably never strip out one of those screws again. So, let's go ahead and get started. Before you start taking the carburetors apart, make sure you either label them or clean them one at a time as not to mix up which cylinder they belong to. The reason for this is each carburetor is jetted differently depending on which cylinder it's connected to. I will be cleaning my carburetors one at a time, and all that's required to take them apart is basic hand tools. Wow, I really lucked out. These carburetors look brand new inside, which leads me to believe that maybe these carburetors have been rebuilt recently. Let's see what the other side looks like. Sweet! The other side was just as clean. Even though these carbs are so clean, I'm still going to flush them out with carburetor cleaner. Now that everything's clean, it's time to reassemble them.
We are now ready to test the pop-off pressure. The shop manual for my 97 Daytona 1000 says the pop-off pressure should be 29 psi. Let's find out. Dang, the pop-off pressure is reading almost 6 psi too high. In order to lower the pop-off pressure, I took the spring out and carefully compressed it with my fingers. After doing this, the pop-off pressure now reads right around 29 to 30 psi, which is right where we need to be. Now that the carburetor is finished, I will service the remaining two carburetors the same way. If you are curious what the finished product looks like, here they are, all dialed in, ready to be bolted on. Unfortunately, I can't install the carburetors right now because of a bad pulse line, but let's get started on cleaning and installing the exhaust. I start off by using a razor blade to remove the old gasket material. It's very important that we have a clean, smooth surface to apply the new gasket to, otherwise it will not get a good seal. After the gasket surface is clean, I use a degreaser to clean the head pipe. The head pipe's all done. I'm going to start on the expansion chamber next. Now that all the parts are clean, I assemble the head pipe and expansion chamber together with a new gasket. Unfortunately, I won't be able to install the exhaust today as they sent me the wrong gasket that goes between the exhaust manifold and head pipe. Unfortunately, this is as far as I can go today. I can't install the carburetors without first finding a new pulse line. And I can't install the exhaust until the correct gasket comes in. So far, I'm really happy with the progress I have made on this old muscle craft. It won't be long before this beast is jumping waves and hitting speeds close to 60 miles per hour again. See you guys next time. So long.